we're going. Right. Okay, so uh, my original plan for my ego action did not really work out. Um, I had the suitcase that I made set up, but um, we were unable to attract as many birds, so instead we are just going to have a discussion in our backyard. I am here with my roommates, Owen and Franklin, who Hello. also go to Western. How's it going? <laughs> and yeah, we're just going to have a talk about about the Pacific Northwest. Um, so basically, what's like the first thing that comes to mind when you guys think of the Pacific Northwest? Uh, trees. Yeah, trees. Yeah, the forest. The yeah. forest. Wood. Green. Just lush. Green everywhere. Lush vegetation. Lush vegetation. Just nature in general. Mountains. Mountains, Mountains especially. It's kind of like something you can always see, kind of no matter where you are in the state. Yeah, I feel like, some, like the Pacific Northwest, like a good chunk of it, at least the chunk that we've spent our lives in, is largely like a rainforest too. Yeah. So there's incredibly high biodiversity here um, compared to a lot of other places. Um, I'm gonna check if the camera just turned off. I don't think it turned off. <laughs> Cut. I hope not, but um, yeah, basically, like, at least the organism that I decided to study for my project was a bird. And have you guys, are birds kind of just birds for you, or have you guys kind of had a different kind of relationship with birds, do you think, compared to um, other organisms? Well, I mean, when my, my dad was an owl hooter when he was in college, so he would go out and look for owls um, at night. Um, Did you ever, like, go out with him on trips like that, or do anything kind of like bird watching trips like that with him? Um... No, but it, it has, like, had, like, kind of created, like, a, a raised awareness of different birds for me. Um, yeah. Just, like, the broad range of biodiversity that exists just within birds. I mean, you have tiny yeah. sparrows and you have giant uh, just, herons yeah. in, in the same backyard. And Do you guys, like, find that, like, it's easier to like connect with nature here? I feel like there's a lot of different things. Like, I feel like the Northwest in general is very outdoor oriented and sometimes and just not even leaving the city and just like walking to the arboretum or just yeah. going on a walk you see so many trees you see so many old trees and you you can tell that the landscape has obviously been altered by people over yeah. time yeah i i do notice though like when i when i go out to these places a lot of the time you can see a lot of clear cutting going on and obviously well washington has had a big history with logging yeah and I think that's still very much a star in our landscape no so. yeah that kind of ties into what we're going to be talking about um with regards to totem poles uh i think it's important to recognize that like all of us have benefited from the land that we live on and the fact that it it originally belonged to and was stolen from like the coast salish people and a lot of the native americans that originate originally were from here and are from here um and it has a very it's a very controversial and very dark history um, of, revolved around that. Um, do you guys remember learning about a lot of that stuff growing up? I feel like I feel like it was definitely a topic that was brought up, but I feel like there are certain things that I didn't learn about that I'm learning about now that I wish they taught me in school. Yeah, um, absolutely. I but, think I think part of that, like I remember very distinctly in like elementary school. Um, having somebody come in and, and show us some of the local wildlife and um, kind of explain the, the various tribes relationship to the, the natural environment but what what really doesn't get taught and what you kind of have to learn for yourself is the way that the people who lived here for generations were forced off their land and how they've been exploited and, and pushed out for for decades and almost centuries at this point and yeah that's that's the part they don't really teach you. Yeah. yeah. That was, there's a lot of education on the little things. Like, I remember going and seeing, uh, going to like a Native American history museum and seeing all the boats that they made out of the solid pieces of wood and how they would make their, their totem poles and how, and all the craftsmanship that goes into everything. and but there wasn't as much of an emphasis on the fact that they got kicked off of their land and a lot of their culture got silenced by Eurocentric values. And even today, it's like you can, you can see that there's like the society we live in doesn't value 
nature that was pretty um, pretty evident in in the Native American culture just the importance of the land yeah the importance yeah. of yeah. the people being connected to the land yeah I think we're I think we're taught to to appreciate the beauty but not necessarily understand the underlying way that our environment works we yeah see, we see ourselves as a separate thing from nature when really we're all a part of it and we're i feel like it's just not something that's valued like yeah i think that can be it can be a hard thing for a lot of people to wrap their heads around the small changes yes they're important but i think that the the impactful things that need to be done are on a larger scale mm -hmm. and enacting those changes is is an uphill battle i am um, I want to go back to a topic that was kind of brought up earlier. We were talking about totem poles. Mm -hmm. um, I've been looking into totem poles because because of the fact that I'm researching a bird and the fact that birds are uh, common like motifs that are used in totem poles. And I learned I learned a few things about totem poles that I didn't actually know, um, like the they, fact they that don't they don't originate are. from like Washington and from like more southern parts um, of the Northwest, like. They actually originate from like places like Vancouver and Vancouver Island and like parts of British Columbia and Alaska. And um, there's been some controversy surrounding it because they growing up, very much Seattle. like a part of Seattle, like as a city, and um, like certain ones, like they have a very controversial history, like very kind of dark history, like we were saying. Um, like there's one in Pioneer Square. That's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, the one in Pioneer Square. Um, and I was just recently reading about it, and the, they, it was actually stolen from a tribe in Alaska, mm -hmm. which I didn't know about. Like, these guys, these businessmen um, from Seattle were going up there to try and, like, find ways to boost tourism and, like, create a greater connection with Alaska from Seattle. And they stumbled upon this, like... It, they thought what they thought was an abandoned village, but a village that was actually just out uh, fishing and they What they did they they, they chopped the totem pole down from up there in Alaska and yeah. they brought it back to Seattle to try and boost like commerce and such and a lot of people are arguing that it should be taken down um, and removed um, and I was kind of curious what you guys would think about that like do you think like obviously this is a very big like it's a part of seattle's history this totem pole mm -hmm. and it's kind of it feels like similar to like a lot of the confederate like mm -hmm. statues that are being taken down like they feel like they're very much an important part of history that we need to remember but are they being presented in the right way to where like the context is is there is like true yeah. and like being put out there you know like do you guys think that Cause like some people like certain people would argue that like totem poles in seattle are like kind of part of this like transitory nature of cultures and like kind of this like migration of cultures from like up and down the coast but then other people argue that it's a misrepresentation of the cultures that are here in the northwest like the duwamish and the squamish and yeah. like because those people like the people that are originally from uh, like the Pacific Northwest, they would do different kinds of carvings. They would create these like um, these welcome figures, um, is what they call. They they look very different from what you would think of as a totem pole. And I was just kind of wondering what you guys would think of that. Like, do you think like it should be removed and maybe placed in a museum? Do you think it should be returned I, to the yeah. original place, so, like that it was made and like belonged to, or do you think it should just remain and like people should be more like they should make more of an effort to like make people aware of the history of the land and like because like i feel like it's an important like yeah i feel like having it here in pioneer square like that's an area that gets a lot of traffic I and think, a lot of people coming through i think best case scenario would be return it making a make a public acknowledgement that can be like a plaque that stays where it it once laid and then pay local people from the local tribes to make something that represents the culture that is from yeah the place yeah. Where from it is. Seattle and from the north and that way you're supporting local tribes and you're kind of restoring the balance yeah and, but i think the most important part is is the acknowledgement